All right, from Samstown in Vegas, we're for the title matches of each division here. Cortez Shank, what a shock, making the title match. Found a way to do it today. Going for his 42nd career JVT title, but he's got his hands full as he's spared in his first four frames and his opponent, Ben Canfield, struck in his first four. And yet it's, a, and it's a yet another potential landmark win here. Cortez won his 40th career JBT title a little while ago. Cortez lost to Jacob Butcher for his 30th career title a couple weeks ago. And if Ben wins this match, he will capture his 20th career title. So a uh, little 20, 30, 40 going on here with some veterans racking up the uh, career statistics. Over in the handicap division, Zach Long's looking for his first career title. He pulled out of his head the second squad today to capture the top seed. And it's one versus two in the handicap title match. He's taken on Justin Freeman, who won last time he bowled with us at Red Rock. So four good stories here. We'll see who comes out on top. And right now, Ben's built himself a 35-pin lead by opening with the front five. He opened with the front six in the last game to defeat top seed Dallas Leong in a thriller, 254 to 248. Hold on boardwalk today, which is a short sport pattern. It's it's really a feast or famine pattern. The people that are good at it can really tear it up. And the people who are not good at it really, really struggle. The more direct down the boards you can be and the further right you can be, generally the better off you are in this pattern, which is exactly what Zach is doing, which is exactly why Zach has had those results. Zach pulled both squads. It was a two-squad event today. His first block was putrid. It was not good. Terrible. And and uh, then he went off and, and had a certain fast food franchise for lunch. Who has not paid me? Oh, who has not paid me enough to name who it was? And all he did is go plus <laughs> two fifty-two for his five games of qualifying after that. And that's not a, you know, sometimes people go way plus because they haven't been re-rated enough because it's early in the year, that sort of thing. Not Zach, he's bowled plenty of tournaments so far this season. He just had the squad of his life and he's kept it up in match play as well. Tez really needs to strike here with Ben on front six and he does. Cortez struggled a little bit earlier on uh, going 180-160 but as you always do give those great bowlers enough time and they'll figure it out and he did going over 200 the rest of the way only qualified number six for match play but won all his matches here to get to the title match freeman is getting the pins in this match he's getting 15 zach has to win by 16 as it stands on the scoreboard he trails by only two and can take the lead scratch if he can strike here and he's making noise you know it's good a confident Justin Freeman. He said you might be looking at your first back-to-back -back winner of the season. And he's a walking the walk after talking the talk. Nice kid, so Zach. Four bowlers who are really bowling well right now. Tough that only two of them are gonna win here. Stackwire tickets, 872. That was good. Does not. Does not, I say does not, as that rack took forever to come down, trip the two. So he's trailing by a little bit here now. Plenty of time though, this is only the sixth frame. Kenfield's gonna wait for Zach to hopefully cover up his two pin. Cut was minus 73 in handicap, so indicative, you know, the of the challenge that this pattern presents that the cut score was lower in handicap is. Fewer handicap level bowlers know what to do on this uh, very specific pattern. There's no way to, to fake this pattern. You gotta be right and you gotta be down the boards. And P.S. for those of you who say that two-handers can't play a shot like that, I give you Ben Canfield who's always been a 200, two-hander. Still always been a 200 or two, <laughs> really. And with that big, lanky body and arm swing, he's able to go down the boards when he has to. To have the advantages of power that 200 give you, gives you and still be as versatile as he is is, is a, a tough, tough combination. Front seven leads the match by 40, but Tez is working on a triple, so we're not done yet, even though he hasn't missed yet. 
That's a little bit left, but that weak ball holds and he crunches his eighth consecutive strike. He's also using really weak equipment and I think he's one of the few people throwing a weak enough ball to get it to hold from that spot. Because that was left to target the whole way. And Freeman almost dominoes everything. He'll take leaving only a solid one pin. By the way, Justin, continuing the trend of buy a JBT shirt and make a JBT title match. Looking sharp, Freeman. Appreciate it. Tez obviously must strike in the next two frames to stay alive. Ups left the whole way. No chance and no more drama over in scratch as far as the winner. Ben's going to be a 20-time champ. But will he win his 20th by shooting only the fourth 300 in JBT history? Four shots away from it. Freeman often does that sort of drop the ball in the lane thing, but the direction's good, so it doesn't matter. He leads by seven on the scoreboard and getting 15 more after that, so he leads by 22 through seven frames. Yeah, Texas A&M has smoked today, and uh, Cortez is pulling at Texas A&M, so he might lose by more than 60 <laughs> right here. It's, it's, it, it's never this case when you're as competitive and talented as Tez is, but this is almost a good loss. He, he didn't do well early on, made a great set of moves, ground out some matches against some tough opponents to make the title match. He's a pretty good second. He would contend there is no such thing, but this really is. Lanes. See the characteristics of the lanes there. Left-hand shot. Missed left shots just have no chance. Only uh, the fact that Ben got his eighth frame to hold is... is uh, a scary sign. That's a good shot. Yeah. When Justin knows it, you hear that oh! coming out of him, and you know it's going to be have a chance to X when it does. Absolutely. You bet. We're going to stick with this the rest of the way here. Ben's got it. Shot of perfection, and Zach still very much in this match. This is an enormous shot right here, actually, for long. Strike working in the eighth. Looks good. Oh, no! Look at that. Oh, just a pinch high. Unfortunately, a solid nine is going to come close to ending his day here. That's just terrible. Looking for your first title, going so good, out of the top seat all day, and what a plum rotten time for a solid nine to show up. Alright, keeps his composure and makes his spare. Now Canfield on the front eight, has 20 titles locked up. Now it's just a matter of history. Oh, couldn't throw it any better for number nine. Anybody know what ball he's throwing? <laughs> black hammer or black beauty? It's a rubber ball. Good shot from Long. Oh no, just checked up on him and he says Bashaw. So the word from the stat department is he's throwing a, a rubber ball right now. I shot 200 with rubber. Black Knight. Plastic rubber. Ooh. Real good shot at the polyester, not rubber. Real good try at the split there, but uh, that's a disappointed long right now. <laughs> Zach is forced into sportsmanship at the moment. He didn't want any part of that. Justin is going to wait while Ben gets his first shot in the 10th. These guys are so, so good, and I guarantee you Ben wants this so, so much. The wide. Oh, he gets the light hit. He's looking around the five board. His eight, eighth frame shot hit about eight, and that shot hit about three and a half. He got the light hit, well, he got the high hit to stay flush, and he got the light hit to tickle there. He's got the room he needs to shoot it. Three bowlers have shot 300 in title matches in JVT history. Matt Jones, way back in 1997-ish. Jacob Buttruff and uh, Derek Acuff are the only three to have ever done it. Trying to become the second righty to do it. The first two-hander to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Tyler Hook again. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. In, a, in a career that has been filled with superlatives, chance for an absolute exclamation point right here. Ben Canfield, 11 strikes in a row. I mean, newly crowned 20-time champ, looking to do something that only three people in our 1,200 tournament history have done. Win a title with a perfect game. Pretty decent crowd hanging on. And, uh, snack bar ticket, 873. That is increasing. Whoever has snack bar order 873 ought to be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> Freeman giving, being really polite and giving him all the time to make one of the most exciting shots of his career right here. Come on, Bob. Stuck Come at the on. line. He got it! Personal history with 20 wins and JVT history with four, the fourth career perfect 300 game. Benjamin Canfield, ladies and gentlemen. Well, when you play Cortez, you sometimes got to feel like if you don't shoot 300, you don't beat them, but it's going to be 300 to 200 this time. What you got to say there? Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, Mom and Dad, indeed. Nicely done. <laughs> Meanwhile, Justin Freeman has got this match close to locked up, but can't afford an area, and it's been a long time since he threw a ball, because he was really polite waiting for Ben to finish here. Looking for back, uh-oh. Wow, lucky to get seven out of that. He heard, he heard some open play bowlers far away over there. That unfortunately is part of it too. The better news for him is that even if he goes seven out here, he's got 159. That's an AMF angle. Oh, it was a black angle? Yeah. Excellent. Black angle was the ball that Ben threw. So it wasn't a rubber ball. That would have been something else. Still, black angle came out in what, 1984 or something? How old were you in 1984? Just checking. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get the spare here. Oh, he makes it. That's plenty good. He leads by 10 on the board and getting another 11. 11 barring a catastrophe, Justin Freeman is going to win his second consecutive JBT title. If you'd like to congratulate Justin with an autographed picture of Marsha Warfield, just write to Justin Freeman. Of. If you didn't watch our previous videos, that's Justin's mom here. This is Marsha Warfield's sister. One of my favorite sitcoms, Night Court fame and other things, stand-up fame. You said Night Court. Yes. Oh my god. Da 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 Oh, I love it. No, look that. Oh. Let him know it, baby. Good enough. Justin is one of the nicest kids you'd ever want to meet, but uh, he will let those pins know how he feels about it. And we told you about it at Red Rock. We're telling you about it again here at Samstown. He might win three in a row tomorrow. He might never lose another tournament. Who knows? Let's just pile it on. 7 2. Can we all be black person? I'm just kidding. Get open second first. Right at that six pin, he's got He's going to shoot 190 scratch here to capture that title. We're at the uh, near the 15 minute YouTube limit here, so congrats once again to the historic performance from Ben Canfield. There it is one more time. We've only seen that three previous times in our entire 19 year history and to personal history as a back to back champ for the first time this season in the handicap division. Hey, hey, Give it, give it to Cortez there yeah, first place. <laughs> I said, I said. <laughs>